Hello. Today we're going to talk about multiple levels in the investigation of cognitive systems. And we're going to start with the Mars approach, also known as the Mars true level approach or hypothesis. So one of the main contributions, methodological contributions from Mars to cognitive science is his insight that it's very important to be clear uh, the level of abstraction or generality at which we should conceive of a problem. First of all, David Murray is one of the early heroes of cognitive science. He was born in Essex in England in 1945 and died of leukemia at the tragically early age of 35. He worked in MIT. He's one of the founders of the fields of cognitive neuroscience. He also probes an early theory of the function of the cerebellum. And then he also developed an influential computational theory of uh, vision, which is collected in his uh, posthumously published book, Vision, a computational investigation into the human representation and processing of visual information, of which you're going to read parts of the first uh, chapter, or you already read, hopefully. And so the background, of course, is that uh, cognitive is information processing. Right? Is He agrees with all early cognitive scientists. And that information processing devices can be understood at various levels. So the levels are first computational, the second is called uh, algorithm and representation, and the third is implementation. So how should we think about a cognitive phenomenon? Right? Think about memory, think about vision, perception in general. Well, he thinks that we should think of a cognitive phenomenon as the solution to a task that has been posed to the system. That's the first idea, that if we don't know, if we don't have an idea of what task the device, be it a biological device, electronic device, doesn't matter, is supposed to achieve, we won't have an idea of how to start our research. And so the other assumption is that it's solving a problem via computation. Again, cognition is computation in this, in this way. So this, the solution is going to be computational. And so the question, the first question then that we have to formulate, and this is again the computational level, the top level is, what is the system computing? And so Mars' answer is that, well, of course, it is computing a function. And so we have to find out which function the system is computing. Now, a digression. I'm sure some of you already know what a function is, and some might have some idea. But here it is. So what is a function? Well, a function is appearing from one set to another set. It is, it is a kind of relation, but not just any kind of a, a pairing. It is a pairing such that to each member of A, there corresponds at most one member of B. There correspond zero members, and there correspond, there can correspond to one member, no more than that. So this is an example of a function, a one-to-one -one function. To each member of A, there corresponds at most, and in particular, exactly one member of B. This is also a function, because to B, there corresponds two, and to C, there corresponds also two. It doesn't matter that two arrows converge in a, in, a, in a single member of two. And this is also an example of a function. In this case, a partial function because it's not defined for all values of A. But it, it, uh, it respects the definition that to each member of A there corresponds at most one member of two. Now, this is a non-function. Why? Because there is a member of A to which there corresponds more than one member of B. And that is B itself. On the, on, the, on the left, that is paired with 2 and with 3. So we can't have two arrows coming out of the same of the same source. And the essence of a function is that to each input, there corresponds at most one output. Knowing the input, you already know the output. Well, this is not the case here, because to B, there corresponds 2, but there also corresponds 3. OK, here's some concrete examples of relations that are not functions. For instance, x is friends with y defined over the set of people. Well, we know that there are people that have more than one friend. For instance, Beth is friends both with herself and with Claire. Right? So that's not a function. Also, the relation m is larger than n, defined over the set of natural numbers, is not a function either, because 6 is larger than 5, but also larger than 4, 3, 2, etc. On the other hand, there are, we also have other examples of relations that are functions. As you can see, functions can range over all sorts of things. They don't have to be numbers. For instance, over the set of all people, you have uh, y is the biological mother of x, and, uh, well, it is a function. And here I'm ignoring issues of surrogate mothers and all of those things. 
because every person only has one biological mother. Also, M is the immediate successor of N over the natural numbers is also a function because zero, for instance, has only one immediate successor, one has only one immediate successor, and so on. And so what is a function then? A function is a pairing from one set A to another set B so that to each member of A there corresponds at most one member of B. Okay, that's all. End of digression. And so we, we know that then the system is computing a function. But then the question is, why is it computing that function as opposed to, to other functions? So what are the constraints on the possible solutions of the task? Uh, we'll see some examples of this. Okay. So sure, the first level then simplifies the goal of the task, the computational level. And this is expressed as a function that the system must compute under certain constraints. And this also interacts with the other levels, in particular with the algorithm level because uh, the, the kind of task and the kind of function that you're computing poses requirements on the appropriate representations and the form of the algorithm. For instance, the addition function is going to make you prefer decimal notation or binary notation as opposed to, say, Roman numerals that are not uh, positional and they're not good for adding. Just talking about addition then. Performing addition, what is uh, a computational level analysis of uh, um, a machine? Suppose that we have a machine and uh, well, if it's performing addition, well then at least it's performing a function from pairs of numbers to numbers. So that to each pair of numbers, it corresponds at most one number. But not just any function from pairs of numbers to numbers, it, must, it does the job. You have some constraints that, uh, for, that the nature of addition is going to, to impart, such as the requirement of commutativity uh, associativity, rules for zero, rule of inverses, etc. So if it respects all those constraints, that's the function that we are that we're aiming for. And so, of course, he's in the field of computational vision. So he, he thinks that, well, in the theory of visual processes, at the computational level, the underlying task is to reliably derive properties of the world from images of it. So it is the business of isolating constraints that are powerful enough to allow a process to be defined and generally true of the world. Why constraints that are powerful enough to be defined? That's a computational problem. So if you see, so the task then, in general, uh, a vision, so first you have what impinges on your retina, and then from that you infer what, what objects caused it in the world. But the array of intensity, light intensity, that you get, that's the input, is uh, two-dimensional on this uh, on your retina but the output the model that you're going to infer about the world is a 3d model of the world so you have a mapping from a two-dimensional domain to a three-dimensional domain it's an inverse problem for usually the optics problem is how to go from a 3d a domain to a 2d domain but here yeah. you have the, the the inverse problem which is again an ill post problem an ill post problem is one that doesn't have a unique solution. If I told you x, you know that x uh, times y is a thousand, then find y. Well, this is an ill post problem because there's no unique solution. Well, something like that happens in vision. You have a trapezoid in a 2D surface. Well, which three-dimensional object caused that? Well, it could be um, well, a trapezoid that is standing in front of you or it could be a, uh, an inclined rectangle. In fact, an unbounded number of, of shapes could be projecting exactly the same image on your retina. And so the idea is, well, what kind of, of uh, constraints, what kind of biases allows the visual system to arrive at a unique solution of how the world is? And that's, again, a computational issue that is also going to be reflected at the algorithmic level. So, not only we have the nature of the task, but the characterization must be suitably precise in order to talk about computing functions. So, at some, the computational level is the level at which the input-output profile of an information processing system is determined and uh, explored. It's, this is the most abstract level. Okay. Next, on the next video, we'll talk about the algorithmic 